Hey guys, it's Sam and today I want to do a book chat about escapism. So according to the official dictionary definition, escapism is the tendency to seek distraction and relief from unpleasant realities, especially by seeking entertainment or engaging in fantasy. So escapism is probably something that's been super relevant the last few years, but especially in 2020. We have been stuck in our homes for the most part if we're following guidelines and we're in America or any of the areas super, super affected. We're engaging in a lot more media, people are just seeking a reprieve from a lot of the reality that's going on. So this has always been something that I've been aware of and I've talked about like briefly here and there throughout my time on booktube. I read primarily science fiction and fantasy and those are escapism type genres in general. But I got thinking about this more specifically because I just finished a book that really brought this into the limelight for me and that is Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. I'm not doing a full review of this book or anything but the theme of escapism is kind of what made this book not as enjoyable for me as it has been for others because of the particular type of escapism that I seek out. So Red, White, and Royal Blue is a adult contemporary romance and it is an alternate reality with different political figures because in this alternate reality this is following the first son of the first female president of the United States and a prince who are sort of like rivals but very quickly form a friendship and relationship so it's sort of a very quick enemies to lovers and the first son is bisexual and the prince is gay and they end up having a romance. Now, like I said, this takes place in an alternate reality where it's not any of our normal political figures. Obama and Biden like are mentioned, but this is like a totally different timeline of like 2016 where this woman who's not an actual political figure gets elected. She's a divorced woman from Texas who is in a biracial relationship and has biracial children and she got elected in 2016. I'm giving you all this context because of the brand of escapism and what I'm going to talk about. So there's a lot of focus on politics in this book. That is not an issue for me. I'm totally okay with issues being brought up in books. The thing that was so jarring for me to read in 2020 is one, this book is taking place within this reality where that that is possible where there was a woman elected who was divorced and part of a biracial family like that just feels so far-fetched for what we've been experiencing in 2020 especially in America. The timeline also takes place from 2019 into 2020. This book was released in 2019 so it had no idea what was going to happen in 2020 and even in an alternate reality the pandemic would have happened so it's very weird even though it's I know it's not the book's fault it's very weird to read a book where like that hasn't happened even in an alternate reality and this book was written as escapism. So the afterword of the book actually says that Casey McQuiston you know experienced the 2016 election and was like I want to write a reality in which like this didn't happen and people didn't choose bigotry and hate and all this stuff. So the book accomplished what it wanted to and that the whole time I was reading it I was just like wow this is so not our reality. And I know a lot of people who read this book were like that oh my gosh this is so amazing and makes me feel so good and gives me all the warm fuzzies and while I really enjoyed the relationship of this book again I'm trying not to go into like a full review of this because I'll talk about this more in my wrap up for this month but while I really enjoyed the relationship all of the like political things that were happening were just like depressing to me because although everything was like working out really well there were so many things that I was like but this just isn't even close to our reality so instead of it being escapism for me and a distraction it more firmly rooted just like my despair over what was going on in actual reality. There's a thread about email servers being like hacked into that was a whole thing in the 2016 election and the books it's like not a huge deal and it's just like I know that it was done in contrast, but I'm still just like, but it was a huge deal. And like the way that things happen in the book and the support that the characters get is beautiful and wonderful. And I'm glad that that was written and that that didn't change. Like I don't want the book to change. I'm discussing how that kind of escapism actually kind of like doesn't work for me. Like it backfired. It like made me more sad. There's a whole part of a re-election happening and it's like the 2020 re-election and having just gone through the actual election it was just like I don't want the stress of having to read about a fictional election and the fact that things worked out the way they did. I was like, you know what, like a month ago I was watching an election work out, I guess, in our favor for a lot of people, but it was still like so close and it's such a mess and it was just like this happy reality this happy sort of realistic, you know, it's contemporary, it's set in reality it was just more like, wow, this is so sad that this should be 
a reality. This should be normal. This shouldn't feel so far-fetched, and it does. So for me, it was not as soothing reading it in 2020 as many people found it to be in 2019, and also because my escapism is different than others. I am curious, I did mention this in my review on Goodreads, but I am curious if you read Red, White, and Royal Blue, which I know a lot of you have because it's so popular, in 2019 versus 2020, what your thoughts were, because I just felt like reading this in 2020 was like not an enjoyable experience because of how stark the reality differences were. I feel like in 2019 I might have had slightly more hope and been like, yeah! And in 2020 I was like, I wish! But wow, do we have a long way to go for that to even be close to reality. Just so you know, I still rated the book like 3.5 stars, and I don't want the book to change. I'm not complaining about the book, or that they should have done stuff differently in the book or anything, because the book was written for escapism, but it still just brings me deep sadness that that is not even close to our reality right now. So with that being said, that was a really good example of how contemporary is not super escapism to me, actually. Yes, I do read a lot of contemporary adult romances in particular, and I think the thing with that and me is if I'm going to read a contemporary book, that there has to be like almost one aspect that's super focused in on. Like I really can't know about the world, because reading about like someone's almost escapism scenario of like this really good relationship and all the cuteness and whatever. A romance book that focuses like really in on the relationship, which most of them do, and don't have a ton of like background life stuff going on, that almost works better for me for escapism purposes because I can kind of like escape into like, okay, I can suspend my disbelief about this like relationship. Like that could totally happen because I think a lot of contemporary romances like as cutesy as they are, like some of them have like a, a tinge of reality in them. So it feels more like, ooh, safe, cozy, wonderful. When we start bringing in more like global things and societal things, which I still think is a good thing to do, I'm not saying these books shouldn't be written, it's just saying for me that doesn't work for escapism. I can read that for other reasons, but escapism and for distraction from reality? Absolutely not. I need my contemporary to not be so holistic, I guess, if I'm reading it for escapism. Because I can just focus on a relationship and be like, yeah, cute, those dynamics, ooh, wonderful. But if it's starting to ta tackle like a lot of issues and being like, look at this reality that's like nice, I'm like, Ours isn't. So that's my deal with like contemporary. So my version of escapism and what you see the majority of on my channel is science fiction and fantasy. I also don't go into every book I read for escapism specifically. I mean all fantasy and media for me is like a slight version of escapism obviously. You're going into a different world, you're kind of like experiencing a different life. Like all of that is still escapism in a way, but as far as when I need like distraction and I'm stressed and I just need something that's like nice, that's when I look for escapism. Not every book is me seeking it out for escapism purposes. And I'm also not holding the book to that standard necessarily either. Like I'm not judging a book based on like how escapist is it for me. For me, science fiction and fantasy work better for escapism because it's a totally different reality. I don't have to mess with and, and struggle with the like, oh my god, this shouldn't be, you know, so it's far-fetched, you know? This, this happy reality shouldn't be so far-fetched. So with science fiction and fantasy, which typically isn't all like happy realities, but there's some escapism in I'm going into a completely different world with a completely different set of problems, a completely different set of rules, and I don't have to even think about my reality. And that's my version of escapism. As far as a series that I would say is some of the most escapism type literature for me, The Wayfarer series by Becky Chambers. This is her genre of science fiction. I think it's called hope punk. Possibly I've heard it also called like solar punk sometimes, but I think hope punk like feels more true. And basically she writes these science fiction realities, slice of life in the future, where things are like, there's still problems, there's still like p individual hardships, but like the society as a whole is like better. Like things are better. Like people are trying. There's hope there. It's it's not, you know, the dystopian future of like grim, you know, fighting. It's more like, you know, stuff has changed, things are different, and yes, people still have hard times individually, but like society is almost like more collective in a lot of ways in her books and is just like more just more hopeful. And that is why I deeply adore her books, because they feel like a warm hug. But these are a totally different reality. There's aliens. There's tech that we don't have. It's in a completely different future. There's still humans and stuff, and it's still very based in humanity in a lot of ways, but it just, it feels more like, yes, in the far future, that could happen. But stuff that's, for me, that's so set in, like, soon, current times, I'm like, no, sadly no. 
and now that's making me sad. I was trying to think of a fantasy book that falls into this category for me, but there's really not. Um, fantasy is more like I'm just in a different world, you know, like I don't have this science fiction is more like science fiction could be reality eventually kind of feel. Fantasy can never be reality. It's purely fantasy. So my fantasy like bad hard things are happening in most of the world, but again it's an escape from our bad hard things happening, you know? So that's kind of how I view escapism and what works as escapism for me. Again, not judging books based on that. Some books just aren't my brand of escapism, such as Red, White, and Royal Blue. Not a bad book. Don't want it to change. Great for lots of people. Just the escapism part didn't work for me. But I'm curious how you guys deal with escapism, what you guys seek out for escapism. I didn't even go into video games, which are probably like my peak escapism. So comment below and let me know how escapism works for you. Do you seek it more in like reality contemporary type settings or do you seek it more like I do in more like fantastical settings? I would love to know. Comment down below and let me know. So thank you all for watching and I'll see all of you guys soon. Bye!